John, Michael, gentlemen, congratulations. The two of you have made it through the first two rounds of our competition and are moving forward into the final round where you're heading back to your home forges to build an iconic weapon from history. This is the largest blade we have ever asked Bladesmiths to make in the final round. Gentlemen, in four days, you will have to build this. The Groot Pierre Sword. During the 16th century, a larger-than-life warrior in the Netherlands, known to the locals as Groot Pierre, or the Giant Pierre, wielded this massive sword in battle. Pierre's size made him the subject of folklore and legend, but the physical size of his sword speaks for itself. The 15-pound, nearly 7-foot-tall sword is the largest European sword ever to be used in combat. As a mercenary and pirate, Groot Pierre is believed to have wielded this weapon with ease, delivering devastating blows to any enemy that got in his way. And it can be seen today at the Fries Museum in the Netherlands. Oh, guys, good luck. You have four days to complete your massive swords. We will see you then. My name is John Simons from Indianapolis. I have three years bladesmithing. Most of that's all self-taught. I love doing this. Some people want to go to Disney World. I want to come here. This is my vacation, so I'm really looking forward to it. This blade is so long, I can only heat up about eight inches at a time, and press it. Just a very repetitive process. Prepping for this quench is going to take a little time. I have three forges. I can get nearly all that sword in the forges at once. This is a super-sized quench tank. Never used it yet. We're going to test it out today. Quenching this, I've never had to climb five rungs of a ladder. Everything needs to go right because there's not enough time to do it all over again. Hope for the best. I didn't feel anything abnormal when it quenched. It is hard, and most importantly, it is straight. All the components are there. They just need some finishing touches and put an edge on it. The blade, it is 100% complete. I'm exhausted, but inside it, it feels wonderful the mother of all swords. My name is Michael Dillon, 54 years old, been forging for 30 years. I started making knives for props in the movie industry. I'm pretty confident, but wearing my pants may fall down. That's why I have a belt and suspenders. I'm used to building big stuff. Some of my sculptures weigh up to 6,500 pounds, so this is in the realm of what I'm used to working on. My quench tank's buried six feet in the earth. Here we go up this ladder. This thing is huge. Guard done, pommel done. The plan is to grind a pound and a half off this blade. Everything's coming out, nice shape. And I'm gonna start the finish of the blade and the guard and the pommel. I'm really happy with it. I really gotta hit something with this. I just can't let it pass. Nasty. Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. John, you are up first. Are you ready? You know I'm ready. All right, let's do this. All right, John, let's talk about your sword here. What I like is that you use a nice, hefty counterbalance. Because despite being a heavy sword like this, it's wieldable. The edges are sharp, it cut deeply. I like that the guard also is not so massive that it gets in the way. And overall, it will kill. Awesome. All right, Michael, your turn. You ready, sir? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Michael, that's a beast. But that's a beautiful beast. Now your edge is sharp. That really cuts deep into the pig carcass. It is a nice, heavy weight, but controllable. And more importantly, you will kill. 
Thank you, sir. Gentlemen, it's time for our strength test, the sheet metal chop. Now, there are three layers of 20-gauge sheet metal in each one of these things. And John, you are up first. Are you ready for this? I am. OK. All right, John, very nice job on this sword. It's got a good weight to it. The blade itself, there are some slight rolls, but it's still plenty sharp. One comment I might have is that the blade's lean enough that it's very flexible. When I pick it up, that tip kind of drops maybe three inches of flex. You start to swing that blade, you don't know where that tip's going to go. It's flopping around. But it did its job. Well done. Thank you. All right, Michael, you ready for this? Give it hell. Oh, good, because this is so much fun. <laughs> All right, Michael, balance point, right where I freaking want it. It's a little bit more of a firm blade. It doesn't quite wiggle as much. As far as damage, just the very edge has rolled. But I would not drag my finger down that edge. It would still open me up. Knocked out of the park. Well done. Thank you. All right, bladesmiths, this is the sharpest test, the watermelon and water jug slice. Johnny, you're first. You ready for this? I am. All right, let's do this. All right, John, let's talk about your blade here. The edge, it cut the first watermelon cleanly and then just wobble, there's so much wobble in this. As Dave said, there's just so much flex in this blade. You don't know where the tip is gonna go. And that's what happened on the watermelon slice. On the water jugs, clean cut. Even the tops are still there wondering what happened. <laughs> Overall, your group PM, it'll cut. Thank you. Michael, your turn, so you ready? You bet. All right, let's do this. All right, Michael, let's talk about your blade here. First stop on a watermelon slice, much easier. Not much flex on the blade, it's easy to keep it and let it drop and let it do its work and it cut all the way through. On the water jug slice, it did cut. Overall, your sword, you will cut. Thank you. That was pretty rad. All right, gentlemen, in this supersize competition, we gave you a task on a scale unlike anything we've ever seen before in this forge. And the blades you brought back here impressed all of us. But as you know, only one of you can take home the title of Forge and Fire Champion and get that check for 10 grand. And if the judges did make a final decision. Today's Forge and Fire Champion is... Michael, congratulations. Now, John, you gave us an unbelievable blade, but it missed by just this much, and Dave's going to tell you why. John, this decision really came down to the extreme flexibility of your blade. That's why we're letting you go. John, you are an unbelievable smith, but unfortunately, your time in this competition has ended. I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. I had a blast. Thank you, guys. Thank you, John. Well, Michael, that makes you the Forge of Fire champion. You're taking home a check for $10,000. Well done, Woo! man.
I'm Forged and Fire Champion. This is the first blade I've ever forged of this size. I'm very proud of my performance. It's very important to me to share the craft and to educate people and make some badass swords. <laughs>